Good morning everybody, welcome back to another video. Today's video is my winter morning routine and I've wanted to film this for so long but the last thing I want to do when I wake up in the morning is put a camera right in front of my face. But this morning the time is just right so the horses didn't get brought in until half past 10, 11 o'clock last night, festive reasons. So this morning I've had a lion, they've had a lion, it's now nine o'clock, it's light, it's bright, I've had chance to wake up, have a couple of cups of coffee, do my face a little bit. It was just the right time. So let's get into it. I will just say, I will just say that this routine isn't by any means set in stone. It always changes. I mean, they're horses, things go wrong, things change. We, we adapt, we improvise, we overcome. First things first, we're gonna put some gloves on. I only had them off because I wanted to show off my nails, but you know, vanity does not have a place when it's minus three outside, so love up. <laughs> baby doll's just crying at me because he's so cold. I'm sorry baby, I can't do anything about the weather. Most important thing as far as the horses are concerned is breakfast. So that's like the first thing I do when I get here. Oh, where's Purdy's bowl actually? That was rookie error number one. I need to go and get all the bowls first. Come on. Callie's left his here. How did you get it there? Now you've thrown it. We'll go and get Purdy's bowl as well. Oh, that's there as well. Handy. You are well trained, you three. Honey buns, I'm doing it. Okay, good girl. Right. So first step, make sure you have all of your buckets at the ready because you can't put the feed into them if you haven't got them obviously. So I'm just waiting for those to soak now. The horses are so impatient, understandably, whilst we are waiting for them to soak. And when the water's this cold, it takes ages for it to absorb. So, you know, in the summer, it's like a couple of minutes and they can have it. And now it's like a full five minutes, six minutes. Patience. It's not... How do you explain that to them? So McAllister has his feed there just because he takes so long to eat it and it means that I've got chance then to muck out his stable and he'll make a mess so at least he can eat it off the floor later on. Billy has his in his stable. Um, he eats very quickly so that's probably nearly finished. Yep. And then Purdy's just out in the field. So whilst they're munching away I will start mucking out Callie's stable. I have started deep littering him. And as you can see, he's been in, how long was he in for? 10, 11 hours, and that's not bad at all. And it shouldn't take long to muck out. Hopefully, hopefully. I'm about three days in with the deep littering and I think, I do have a feeling this is going to be the one. I don't know whether I'm going to end up using more bedding or less bedding, but I don't mind using a little bit extra if the time that it takes me to do the horses is very much reduced and the horses have a nice deep comfortable bed. So I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going with it. So far it's quite promising. But we'll see. We'll watch this space. It's very, very simple to muck out. I will try and show you. Hello, we're getting very up close and personal. So very simple. I just kind of shake through the top layer. And uh, oh, I just chucked that back into the bed. Um, it's very simple. You just kind of fork through all the bedding, take out all the droppings, shake off any bedding and it will just fall through the fork. Like I love wood chip, wood pellets rather. Um, and I think this is gonna, this is gonna be a new, a new era of deep littering or semi deep littering. It's not full deep littering, is it? Although you never know, maybe I could convert fully. It's just so convenient. I don't know how many extra bags I put in. I mean, his bed was looking a little bit tired anyway before I started. 
um, deep littering him. Um, so I think I started with three extra bags of wood pellets and then the first day that I deep littered, when I went to muck out that morning, um, there was still a little bit of wet that had risen to the top and I saw on a forum, I think it was the Horse and Hound forum, that if that happens, that means that you just need to use more bedding. So that's what I did. I put another bag in yesterday and so far this morning, it does look all right. So, um, yeah. They've all finished their breakfast. So Callie's stable is done. He's going for some water. Um, now we just need to mark out Billy's stable, which also not bad at all. Where's your coat? Why is everyone losing their coats? Dilly, where's your coat and why are you covered in poo? suddenly gone very dark. I think we're about to have a snowstorm or something. Look at me getting adventurous with my weather predictions. I got it right in one video. But it does feel something has changed. I was in the middle of mucking out and I just felt it all go dark. Anyway, I'll carry on. So now what I'm doing is Billy and McAllister just kind of have free reign over this hay all day. They can eat as much as they want for as long as they want. Um, but Purdy, obviously, she's in the paddock. So I take her some hay and um, then I'll put some hay in their stables as well, all ready for tonight. So that all I need to do tonight is bring them in, feed them and pick their feet out. Um, so we'll go and give this to Miss Purdy. Now we've got the very exciting job of poo picking the field and sorting the field shelter out for Miss Purdy. They've all got hay, they've all got water, they've all been cleaned out. So it's literally just this and then I'll pick their feet out. Purdy has this whole paddock to herself with the field shelter. Sometimes the boys will go out here as well, but it depends what the ground's like because I just don't want to risk churning it up and making it all boggy and horrible if she's got to live in here all winter. So that's why she gets this whole space to herself. Um, and then McAllister and Billy, they either just get turned out in the yard and they have got that patch behind the stables. I mean, it's not a lot of space, but at least they can move, they can walk, they can kind of like forage around and have access to Purdy. Sometimes I'll leave that gate open and they can come into this bit as well. I might do that today. Um, and then occasionally, as I said, sometimes they will come out here, but only if it's really dry.
I am just going to open this gate up so they've got access to that little patch of grass as well. Mostly because, yes, it's a bit more space for them and they can have a sniff around at the grass. If they can get it, it's all a bit frosty. Like, look at that. Um, but more so they've just got more access to that water there because I've left buckets out. But when it's cold, they just seem to drink so much. So um, they've got buckets but I'll just defrost. We'll just take the ice off this and then they've got a bit extra. But it's rock solid. Hello, Billy. So we're all done. We've got Purdy with her hay, her water, and a nice poo picked field and a clean field shelter. And then the boys have got this tiny little patch and then access to this and as much hay as they like. So all in all, job well done. And the stables are ready for them just to go straight into tonight. They will just need, there is hay in there, you just can't see it. Um, they will just need their feet picking out and some hard feed. That's it, that's my morning routine. It obviously has taken me quite a while this morning because I've been faffing around filming this video and trying to film a little one for TikTok as well. So um, it's probably taken me about an hour and a half, but normally 40 minutes, 45 minutes for three horses. It's not too bad, I don't think. So yes, I'm going to go and thaw out. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.